Curry. What I don't want to do is sit here and run over the fact that the Hawks played a tremendous series, took down two teams that people honestly didn't think they were going to take down. They were kind of rooting for these other two teams as they did it. Trey Young has now asserted himself amongst the league's best. It's pretty much undeniable, even especially if I'm saying it, because I wasn't the biggest Trey Young fan. I thought he was mad corny before these playoffs. And the way he's the way Tell he's us. the way he's doing it, <laughs> the way he's doing it is, is is a lot different. Like, think about this for a second. Trey Young went into two of the most hostile environments in the NBA, back to back series. Have given them 40 piece after 30 piece after 40 piece. Won three games on the road in Philly, who back to back seasons has been the best team at home in the NBA. And is breaking hearts. Not only is he winning games, but it's the manner in which he's doing it. Damn near Reggie Miller esque the way he did it in the garden. Going at Spike Lee, going at the fans, ruthless. Even when he has a five for 23 shooting game. Even when he has a four for 20 shooting game, there's big moments in all of these games where Trey Young is like willed the Hawks to victory. And it's to me, it's one of the most impressive playoff debuts I've ever seen. Not overall performances, but for his very first playoffs, it's one of the most impressive playoff runs I've ever seen. By the way, that man's getting off his first signature shoe while he's doing it too. It's cold blooded. Like it's 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 mad impressive. I gotta give him his props. It is. It, it even it's even better than what Tatum was doing, you know, that year that they went mm-hmm. to the Eastern Conference Finals, his rookie year, because he has every reason really to like wilt in these moments. Doesn't have mm-hmm. the size. Doesn't really have the athleticism. You want to say that you that you expect for a physical playoff series, um, and he's was thought to be somewhat of a liability on the defensive end. Thus far, no one has been able to take advantage of that. And you got to, and not only Trey Young, you, you know, give Trey Young his uh, credit for sure. But like the basketball Nate McMillan has that team playing, I'll say it again, since he's been instated as their interim coach, they are the second best team in the NBA. Best team Period. Like if you look at it from that, that angle, it shouldn't be super surprising what they're doing, but the fact that, as you said, he's been able to go into the heart of two basketball cities, Philly, New York, and topple them has been incredible. And you got to give credit to his to, to the supporting cast, Herter, Gallinari, John Collins, Capella. Like, those are all solid all players. They're solid players. It's a solid team. All of them. Yes, sir. Well, well, that's a good point, Jake. To, to, to really highlight what they're doing. What are they doing? We talked about what they did with the Sixers series, but now they find themselves in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Milwaukee Bucks, who also got a monkey off their back getting to the Eastern Conference Finals. So we're going to highlight both teams. Of course, when we do it, we go to the facts. So, Kyle, let, let's let's get the facts on this Hawks, this Hawks-Bucks series real quick. Yes, sir. So, I mean, we saw the Hawks take game one. They're now 36-15 and 15 in the last 51 games. That's the best team in the East. Um, on the other side, we talk about Giannis, right? He's let us down in the playoffs recently, but he's coming into this series having a great playoffs. Uh, in the Nets series, after going down 0-2, he averaged 34 points a game, 13.6 rebounds on 56% shooting. And the guy we mentioned, Trey Young, is he going to be able to step up? The facts on this one is he just won his first career game against Giannis ever. He started 0-5. for 5. His career shooting against the Bucks was 30% and 30% basically from field goal and three-point percentage. So the facts here are going to rely on can Trey Young step up and which team gets the role player minutes they need. Because with the Bucks or the Hawks, I mean, Bogdan still looks hurt. So we'll see what he could do. He Cam Reddish, bad in game one, too. Cam Reddish is problem. apparently coming back. We'll see what that means. I don't think you throw a guy into valuable playoff minutes after he hasn't played in a while and your team's rolling. Um, and then Herter and Collins, they were coming off of great series. Uh, Herter, of course, had those big games, but had an all-around good series. Shot 48% from the field. Collins was giving you a double-double on average against the Sixers, and I think Capella should play better than he did against Embiid. And on the Bucks side, it's Holiday. He went for 33-10 and 10 in Game 1, and they still lost because of this man, Chris Middleton. Middleton played 40 minutes, had 15 points on 26% shooting. I mean, they got to find a team effort because the Hawks are playing great team basketball all around, and you can get a bad game out of Bogdan, and it doesn't matter. But a bad game out of Chris Middleton, it just shows that they're going to lose. I mean, mm-hmm. 33 and 10 from Drew Holiday should never be a loss when he's your third best player on the court. I mean, facts. So facts. And, and it's t- going to be tough. 
Tell Chris Middleton, welcome to the Eastern Conference Finals. You can't have bad games anymore. Bad games yeah. don't exist anymore. Now, now you got to show up night in and night this out. This is or, his thing, bro. Yeah. That is how Chris Middleton plays basketball. It's like, like I'm going to have two horrible games, and I'm just going to destroy agree. you for three straight. And, and and But the two horrible games, you're going to lose. And you can't, yeah, you, can't afford, you, can't afford, you can't afford to drop those two games anymore. What I look at with this series is I'm looking for patterns now. And it looks like this series is off to the same start that the first two series were that the Hawks played. You come in, have a, a Trey Young as a masterful performance in game one. You come in and jump on someone on the road, grab home court, grab momentum. Even when the opposite team star has a good game, you still win. Julius Randle had a good game in game one in the first round. They still won. Joel Embiid had a great game in, in game one of the second round. The Hawks still won. Giannis and Drew Holiday both still have great games in game one, and the Hawks still win. So that that's kind of the pattern I'm already seeing with this Hawks Bucks series. And that's bad news for the Bucks because the Hawks, I've said it last week. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The Hawks sees momentum maybe better than any team has done in these playoffs. And if you let them grab momentum, they will beat you. Like they will beat you in a whole series. And it looks like they're off yeah. to that start already. It's tough for Milwaukee dropping a home game, game one. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not too many teams you can look at that have the same type of home court advantage that Milwaukee has. I mean, those fans are locked in and dropping game one. The Trey Young is an issue, as we've seen. I, I do. I do just want to pump the brakes a little bit here because you're right. And, and here, the other thing that has somewhat bothered me is the way that after the Atlanta Hawks come in and beat whatever team it is, game one, the immediate conversation is, well, what is this team doing wrong? What are the Bucks doing wrong? What what are the Sixers doing wrong? They're playing a really fucking good team. Like yeah. it's not sometimes it's they it was a three point game and both teams shot below twenty five percent from the three point line. Mm -hmm. That will be where the series, in my opinion, that will be what swings game two and ultimately what swings uh, the series is if you can limit the Hawks to the, to shooting three point uh, open three pointers. Kyle talked about Trey Young's percentage around 30% against Milwaukee. Uh, you, you have to hold them to that. And then on offense, you have to run your offense and get open looks. And Milwaukee, as we've seen, even in the even in the Brooklyn series, James, we were watching game seven. I'm like, what do they do to get a bucket mm -hmm. in, in Milwaukee? Like give it to Giannis yeah, and straight line drive into his defender and I'll put up a layup. That's a terrible, terrible look on offense. Like, I don't know. I, it might be Atlanta's time. And it might be. I think when to answer that question, what are teams doing wrong? They keep acting like the Atlanta Hawks are, don't steal game one. You keep acting like they're supposed to come into your home, wilt under under the pressure, under the under the circumstance of being at someone else's home court. They're not going to put. Oh, stop acting like the Hawks aren't supposed to be here. That's what teams are doing wrong. Like, like we're going to go in and win game one and we'll pick up the series after that. Like, no, they are coming here to steal every game if you let them. Stop letting them. Like, like yeah. teams don't wake up until the second half when they're playing the Hawks in game one. Like, oh, shit, this team is kind of good. Yeah, bro. Like, how much evidence do you need to see? You know, how many how many teams do they need to beat before you be like, they're, they're not going to do that to us? You know, it's crazy. Actually, the, one of the funniest things I saw – it was on Twitter. It was like Trey Young hit the last three and, and looked over for a celebrity to talk shit to in the crowd and forgot he was in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> they said, man, look to the sideline. I saw Packers O-line, man. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, that, that really is where you are. Um, but we're, we're going to move on. Actually, the last part of this, it's just funny, and I just want to address it real quick. It says, Coach Bud Revenge is this. Like, is, is this time for Coach Bud to get – he's already down a game to his former team. But is this now time for him to get some revenge? I didn't know Budenholzer deserved revenge. Doesn't seem like <laughs> a, 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 a revengeful kind of guy. But, like, is this his opportunity to salvage whatever the hell went wrong in Atlanta? Uh, I mean, he's got a lot going wrong in Milwaukee the past man. couple years when it comes to the playoffs. So, I think the reputation is the one he got to – Avenged right now. I'm not, I'm not. I don't think he's too mad about the Hawks right now. Yeah, he got to worry know. about keeping a job before he worry about. You've had back to back, to back to back MVPs. Giannis, the defensive player of the year, and now you get bringing all these pieces. I think he's got to avenge his legacy here. Mm -hmm. Before we move on, real quick though, I want to put my thoughts on this series because I just kind of get the facts. Go ahead. What I see in the Hawks right now is um a team, and I didn't realize it in the Sixers series because I, I see the Sixers the same way, even though they didn't act like it. Is they got five guys on the court that are threats. At all times. And this is one thing that's hurting the Bucks. And a lot in that game one, I'm seeing P.J. Tucker and Pat Connaughton on the same rotations. 
they got the fourth and fifth most minutes played. When you look at the Hawks side, it's like Herder and someone else, like guys that are actual threats. So on the Bucks, it's it's going to be tough if, if you have to run Pat Connaughton for 30 minutes and P.J. Tucker for 35. Because mm-hmm. neither of these guys are going to give you valuable offensive minutes unless you're wide open in the corner for Tucker or Connaughton finds some, you know, back cuts or maybe sees an open three, which he's not even great at. So He airballed the game thing. winner. He airballed yeah. the game winner. Over that's what I'm noticing three. about the Hawks, man. The Hawks, I mean, of course they play great together. I mean, in terms of on paper, this team coming out of the regular season should not be here right now. Mm-hmm. But they found something that clicked and – Every guy is a threat, and that's that's big right now. If Giannis goes cold for a six minute streak, or Drew Holiday can't find a three bar, Chris Middleton does what does does he? Blah, blah. Chris Middleton does what he does in game one again. Mm-hmm. The Hawks are not going to have you know stretches like that because every, someone else is going to step up, and I'm not sure the Bucks are going to have that. I, this go ahead, Jake. I just really quick is important to note they're missing Divincenzo, who would be that fourth oh, or yeah. fifth guy. I'm just talking on what we got right now. Right, yeah. for sure. Right. And then number two, and this is maybe like a like a what if scenario. The Bucks, essentially, to the common man for a while, Bogdan Bogdanovich was a was a buck, like straight up was a buck. Mm-hmm, like, oh, mm-hmm, a, mm-hmm. Deal done. <laughs> and it's not like Atlanta was going to make a move for Drew Holiday, like. Now we would be talking about Bogdanovich, but maybe he would be hurt. Maybe he wouldn't be on the Bucks, and that player wouldn't be there for the Hawks. It's just interesting to think about. The Hawks may not be here. Like I know Bogey's not been like the craziest, craziest player, but there's big shots and big moments, and he's like you said, he's always a threat. Um, my last point that I want to make before we move on is that that game one and maybe the series boiled down to the last thirty seconds, where the first game winning a shot attempt came from Pat Connaughton. Air ball, and then the second game winning shot attempt came from Chris Middleton. That John barely hit the front rim. So if, if you're the Bucks, you're in a very tough situation because if you find yourself down three with one possession left, which it's the playoffs and the, the conference finals and finals probably got four or five of them games built in where you have one possession that comes down to a three, you can't go to your two time MVP. Where, where, where do you go? If I'm Chris Middleton, I'm Pat Connaughton. Like I may know in the back of my mind, I have to be, get like hit a big shot. But if I'm sitting next to the two-time MVP, a top three, five player in the league, it's not really in the front of my mind that the game-winning shot's going to have to be on me. The Bucs yeah. are in a bad spot because their best player can't take the game-winning shot. It's got to Middle- be Chris Middleton or Pat Conson. And Middleton Middleton's hit a big, proved, Middleton he hit a big shot earlier in the playoffs. He's, he's had a lot, though, in the past right, couple but, years. But I'll for a guy that. that you're talking about is wishy-washy for, in the game, yeah. especially game one, because game one was the example where yeah. he was absent, but at the end of the game, like, damn, we still got to put the ball in his hand because a thing. Pat just yeah. airballed. Giannis can't do it. Like, I don't want to go to Chris Middleton's 15-point half and ass in 40 minutes, yep. but I got to. DiVincenzo's yeah. hurt. Brent Forbes is, isn't really that guy yet. Like, max money, man, Chris Middleton. 50-40-90 guy, Chris Middleton. That's who's going to have to win you some ball games. And I, I said if from the beginning of the playoffs, if that's their formula, they're not going far. They're not winning a championship. He's, if he's having his good games, though, I mean, that man was trading buckets with KD last series yeah. in the fourth quarters. I mean, if, on his good games, I want him with the ball. But, yeah, if he's going to have these shaky nights, you're you're right. It's not going to win you games, you know, half of the time. So. Definitely can't win you games.